This is a Guide Your Light Network production, creating podcasts with purpose. My name is Kiani Mills, and this podcast is created to help you, to help you see, feel, and experience the human side of business. I'm a business owner, an entrepreneur, and a parent. And like many who have traveled this path before me, I've been through the lows of the lows and the gut-wrenching pain. But I've been through the triumphs and the wins and the indescribable highs, all of which I consider to be my lessons in the school of life. On this show, we are going to start some conversations to ignite ignite new world world ideas ideas into some very old age businesses. So if you're a leader, a business mind, or an entrepreneur, get ready to think, act, and feel differently so that we can all reach a new level of business success together. So what are you waiting for? Welcome back to this week's episode of She Can Humanize Business, where we like to bring all things business to the table but push it to the side so that we can get to know the humans behind the businesses because, as we know, business is life and life is business. So I have an incredible woman joining me today who happens to be one of my best friends and the Guide Your Light Network owner, Maritza Barone, her friend and neighbour, Georgette. So welcome, Georgette. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm really looking forward to this chat. And I loved when we were first, you know, I first asked you to come on the show and you were like, oh, I don't know. But now we're sitting here doing, you know, the (laughs) pre-show chat and you are totally cool, calm and collect. So I, I well, love Well, I that. wouldn't go that far. This is just so out of my comfort zone. But I, um, yeah, I, and it's such an interesting category or subject that you're talking about because this is something that I would love to be more like, you know, like put myself out there a little bit more, mm-hmm. be more of the face of the brand. But I struggle with that so badly. So I'm hoping to come here and learn about myself and and some I topics it. today. Oh, I love it. And it really like sink or swim. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> to go straight into the deep end <laughs> and jump right in. So well done. Well done. I'm really looking forward to this chat. Now I start all of my episodes asking the same question, which is what does humanizing business mean to you? So I suppose it means two things. Firstly, I think, as I said, about being the face of a brand and telling your customers what your business values are all about. That is something that is important to get across. And as I said, I struggle with that being so available um, to the public. I find a little bit embarrassing. Secondly, I think it's more about making business accessible to people as well. So making it obvious that it's not just about business and it's all very numbers focused. It's about a lifestyle and -hmm. a choice and making, you know, it's, it's, it's possible for anybody to do it. Yeah. Oh, I love that so much. And it resonates, especially with, with your backstory as to how and why the business started. So I feel like this is a perfect opportunity. Lead us down the path, take us back to the beginning And tell us why you created this business. And for the listeners, they will have already read the bio and listened to the intro. But yeah, um, where did we start and and how was it created? So um, originally, I was a um, a futures, which is a derivatives trader in London, which I did for 25 years. And when I met my husband, he's from New Zealand, and he said to me, would you ever be open to moving down under? And I was like, yeah, one day, yeah, one day. And then eventually, after about 18 years, he said, um, it's time to go. His mum was unwell. And he said, would you move to New Zealand? And I said, mm, maybe Australia. So we decided to move down under and settled on the Sunshine Coast. But mm. obviously, knowing there's not much use for derivatives trader on the Sunshine Coast, I thought I'll I'd like to set up a business. We were traveling traveling a lot with our three daughters and I realized that there was no substitute for big bulky beach towels. So this is where I just came up with an idea where I could have them woven differently so that the sand can't penetrate like the terry towel loops and get 
you know, get into the, the towels. So I was spoke to lots of textile engineers. And basically, when I thought I moved to Australia, I literally had even in the first week, I had loads of samples of different fabrics. So I just hit the ground running. And I've been in Australia for five years now. and The business has been going for four years, 11 months now. So mm-hmm. yeah, so and then I thought, how can I make I'd like to wholesale to shops. So how can I make them a little bit different? you know, to, to people that, you know, pick up towels on a shelf, they'll be laying flat. I thought I'll put them in a bag that stands up on a shelf and um, people will be able to pick them up, have a look at them, feel them. And obviously you can use the wet bag for anything. So that was mm. our first hero product um, and it yeah. still remains our bestseller. That's amazing. And and I was, I've got two of your towels. My kids use ah. them and the bags are so genius. They are so oh, genius, especially you. for when you leave the beach. We're in Australia. We have beaches everywhere. Not everyone's going to be near a beach, but we live literally at the beach. So taking the towel, even when it's wet and shoving it back in that bag. And it's like, is it wetsuit material that the bag's made out of? Yeah, neoprene. Yeah. Yeah. And the thick zip so that it doesn't get stuck. (laughs) Honestly, it's the little things for us mums that make the is. world of difference. They make good dog walking bags as well. We use ours every day for the dog. <laughs> clever, clever. See, my daughter commandeered hers for like a little sleepover, like skincare bag. Yes. So instead of using a makeup bag, she takes that down. She uses that. I know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a deal. You get two in one, really. Absolutely. I love it. So talk to me a little bit. Like I know that this was a, a dream that kind of came out of nowhere and then happened really fast. So you yeah. were saying like four years and 11 months, you were here for a month and it was already going with samples and things yes. like that. What was yeah. it like at the start? It wasn't supposed to be as big as it has grown. I think mainly because I thought I was going to be focusing on my social life and making friends and like buying a house and getting ourselves sorted. But the only reason I did it was actually just to earn enough money so I could get some flights, go back and see my family. But it kind of snowballed. So when I did my first market in, on the Sunshine Coast, it's um, I just sold out within the first couple of weeks. And I was thinking, well, this this is pretty amazing. So I ordered some more. And again, they sold out. So I knew I was kind of onto something um, and then I, they kind of, the, the towels evolved a bit and they are what they are today now, but mm-hmm. that's how it started really and just snowballed. And then from there, I set up a website. Then I went to an exhibition and showcased all the products and I have now got 300 um, stockists of the towels as well. So it's yeah, amazing. So, yeah, it happened quite quickly. Yeah. And I hear that your uh, garage was a bit of a storeroom for a while. Yes. Yes, it still is, actually, because (laughs) although um, I do have a warehouse in Brisbane, but I also just to give them a hand and do some single orders, I do some of the single orders myself. So, yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. It's so incredible. I love these. Well, look, and yes, absolutely. And I feel like there's still a part of being involved in the business that I know for me, I, I in my conveyancing firm, I still do contract reviews with my clients and have that one-on-one time with them. I love it. And then I guess your version of that is is packing an order and sending it out and you know. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think I, I, I struggle with actually handing over the reins sometimes. So I just like to be <laughs> able to see how they're being sent out and yeah. Oh, I love that. The kids get involved as well. So it's a family business and they get paid. So if I took it 100% away, they'd not be happy. Yeah, no, that's their pocket money, mum. Don't touch that. (laughs) And I love that. Another uh, business owner who is also a control freak. It's wonderful. (laughs) We are everywhere. It's almost like I feel like there's a part of that like narcissistic tendencies in us humans that go, you must have that trait if you wish to run a business. (laughs) Yeah, probably. (laughs) Yeah. So there you go. You're not alone. Don't worry about it. In those first days, you had an idea. You knew what the idea was. You knew you wanted to solve it. So you went and spoke to the textile engineers. What was the biggest catalyst for you that if you go, oh, if I could have changed, if I knew then what I know now, right at the very start of kind of like production phase, what do you think it would be? Not much, to be honest, because apart from buying more from my first market, I I just seem to... I was very lucky, apart from the designs, the designs I would change, which I have obviously, but yeah, it's just getting the designs right. And obviously when you first put a design forward, you know, the patterns, you have no idea if they're going to be popular or not. I think just buy small quantities of your yeah buy small quantities of your first patterns and see Mm -hmm. how they go but there's not much I would actually change because 
yeah, mm-hmm. I did do that. I, I bought small amounts of each pattern and worked out very quickly which ones mm. were not going to sell. Yeah, wonderful. And so how did you know who you needed to start with? Because, I mean, if I thought about making a towel brand, I probably wouldn't think, I didn't even know that a textile end- engineer existed. I'd Googled just that, textile engineers, and I was led to a company in Australia. That they had, you know, the engineering to back up the, the products, but if I'd have wanted to use them to manufacture unfortunately it would I've had to, I would have had to have sold the towel for about six or seven times the price it is now so it wasn't possible so I had to outsource and I just did a lot of traveling and I found um, a marketplace where I ended up finding people that were advertising their textiles okay. and they created it from you know just working together oh that's amazing so it's yeah. like a a collaboration to find yeah. the result and I, I feel like that's a really beautiful thing like you knew what you wanted to create so it's almost like, I know why I'm creating it. I know yes. what I'm creating. Yeah. The how, it figured itself out pretty pretty smoothly by the yeah. sounds of things at the start. It, and then it evolved over time. I started out thinking I've created a product that solves a problem, which was great. Mm. But I actually feel like I'm in the gifting business because most of the towels I was selling were actually for, for, for presents and gifts. Mm. So everything I produce is packaged like beautifully and um and so it gives people the opportunity to give a practical present yeah that will definitely be used it's so true and it's such a great gift especially in Australia yeah (laughs) we all need a beach towel that doesn't bring home half the beach exactly I love it it's so beautiful so beautiful so share with us a little bit like who is Georgette who behind the business who are you oh goodness well um obviously as I said I've born and brought up in London come from a very very close family lots of friends left school young because I have ADHD and I struggled at school I managed to get myself a job on the trading floor as a runner and I just grew um, my career path in that direction and by the time I was 18 I took my trading exams and became the youngest female trader and yeah and, and and that's I still feel like I'm a bit of an imposter selling beach towels because I suppose I did trading for so long that that's I still feel like that that's what I am. From there, once I'd had my three girls, I decided that I couldn't carry on trading. It was too um, demanding. So I set up a business selling toys and the toys was basically slightly different. It was an online whip round so people could contribute towards a trampoline or a bike or even a a trip to Euro Disney for a a child's birthday so don't receive mm-hmm. lots of plastic that went really well and I went on the Shark Tank version of uh, or the BBC version called Dragon's Den oh amazing that yeah would have been incredible and, yeah so on there I managed to get investment um, from two of the dragons and I ran that business for about six years That's yeah and it, it it wasn't a great time because I had four kids under three it was very stressful and I ran it as well as I could but mm-hmm. unfortunately when you're changing people's spending habits like contributing towards a present than actually rather giving a present you need a lot more money than I had initially mm. asked for and what I had so after six years we had to let it go which was which yeah. was a really sad time but in the end I think the mental health was more important and um yeah mm. and, and and that was just before we moved to Australia yeah I feel like that's a really important point to make as well because for a lot of people in business that idea of letting it go is almost we would naturally marry that up with failure yeah and and for a lot of people I guess it they would drag it on for the sake of I own a business yeah Um, well and and their efforts between whether it's a service-based business or an e-com or whatever it might be the intention is there and the intention is clear, but I feel like there's also something in there around just knowing when it's time to let it go. Yeah, it's a really important um, point, actually. You know, you have to do what's right for you and your family. And yes, if it means, you know, like giving something up that you've spent so long building, it is it is really disappointing, but you have to think, you know, why, why you're having to give it up and just think yeah. about the future. Yeah, absolutely. And that's where sometimes it's one door closes, another one opens. Exactly. And it, it can be really hard to see it in that 
moment yes. and the heartbreak that comes yeah. with it as you said it was a, a sad time yeah um, it was and I look at sometimes I still have my old laptop and I look at the some of the documents in there I'm thinking oh god I, you know the, the amount of time that I spend yeah. and I and we used to hook up with lots of big retailers in the UK so um, Marks and Spencers and Tesco and they're really really big brands and I remember getting on a train and going to going to visit all the people that are high up in all those retailers and, and and meeting them and trying to take me on, you know, to give me their feeds, their products, their toys. And I did all of that and they all agreed. And then I kind of, yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> Look, we do Never what we mind. can with what we've got at the time that we've got it. And yeah, exactly. I feel like too, that, that experience of running that business and going on the you know, mm. version of Shark Tank and, experiencing all of that surely that's helped in what you've now set up on this side of the fence I've I've obviously um, that was more of a service-based business you know we were creating a service where people could contribute and we also tried to change people's spending habits so for my next um, venture (laughs) venture um, I wanted to create a product yeah. It's just a lot and, and solve a problem. So, yes, it did mm-hmm. actually help me choose something to do, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I feel like that um, we don't know what we don't know and by going into that service-based environment and, as you said, changing people's spending habits without a product yeah. to then going, actually, no, I don't want to do it like that and I can't do it like that again yeah. for my mental health and for the you know the yeah. sake of moving to Australia and things like that. So then going, no, I want to sell a product. Yeah. Yeah. That clarity is incredible. Yeah. And I didn't realize that until I just said it then. How cool is that? <laughs> See, I told you I'm finding things out about me all the time. <laughs> oh my gosh. Life, life is a daily journey of learning out, learning new stuff about ourselves. So that is remarkable. That is absolutely remarkable. And so when um, I'd love to just talk into that because I know a lot of people have heard about Shark Tank and it is kind of a really cool thing. I'm, I'm very, very excited to hear more about that. And I feel like the hardest thing, not hardest thing, sorry, the biggest challenge would have been like the preparation and the prepare for the pitch mm-hmm. uh, for me personally. Uh, was that a challenge for you? Was that exciting? Like where was your mind at with that? It was all over the place. I decided I was going to learn it verbatim. And what you see on Dragon's Den or Shark Tank is actually really not what you what you go through. So, for instance, I was in there being grilled for about an hour and a half, and they only showed about five, six minutes of it. They put different answers and looks to different questions. They really mixed it up. So... Yeah, it, it it was very painful to watch and I've only ever watched it once and then I have never been able to watch it again. So as I mentioned, I've, you know, I've got ADHD and if I, I have to kind of just say things to get them off my chest, otherwise I can't, I can't come back from that. And so I just don't, and then they were like, right, take a step back and And so I said it all again, but then I got my words mixed up and then they, and I said, can I start again? And they were like, no, absolutely not. Carry on. But they do things also, I believe, to try and trip you up to make good TV. So for instance, I had these, yeah, I had these boards. I referred to the boards throughout the pitch. And what happened was um, just before I went up the stairs on Dragon's Den to go into the studio, they said, oh, you can't take those boards in because, um, or this port board in because it's got your logo on it. And I was like, but but it's already been agreed and, and people have signed off on them. So why can't I take it in? They went, just not this one. So I think that's where it all unfolded and went completely not to plan was when I referred to the board and then it wasn't there um, and I just froze and it was so bad I think I was silent for about two or three minutes I was just like I don't even know what I'm going to say next and um, afterwards I had a lecturer from a university call me and ask me if they if I could come in and they wanted to analyze um, what happens to people when they freeze and don't speak (laughs) what happens to the brain (laughs) 
which is just awful oh, but um oh, yeah it's like yes. nothing like rubbing it in oh that's like salt in the wound isn't it yeah Can you at yeah. least wait like a couple of weeks i know and i said down, absolutely or... not you're not looking yeah. into my brain no. yeah <laughs> thanks but no thanks yeah oh my goodness but the dragons were really really they were lovely um oh, they were really right. lovely so yeah they're very supportive yeah well, well it ended up working <laughs> But you're right, there's something about uh, reality TV that they need to make people stay interested and yeah. keep it keep yeah, it interesting. I get that. I mm. get that. But it, it ended up in a positive result. Yes, um, and I had two dragons offer the full money and I asked if they would maybe split it and I could work with two dragons. So I got two of them, which were my favourites actually. So, Clever. yeah, I was really happy. That's incredible. That's amazing. Yeah. So what, what's the biggest takeaway from that experience? Well, know your numbers because that was something that I did know, so that was good. I think just I'd like to say put yourself out there even when you're out of your comfort zone, mm. but I swear I still got PTSD from the whole thing. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, and I'd, I'd struggle to do something like that again, but, mm. yeah, that, that's well, probably what I take away. Baby steps, podcast number one. Oh, oh yes. I love it. You should be, honestly, I feel like it's such a, a remarkable moment that if you haven't sat down and, and giving yourself the credit that is that is absolutely due by going through that experience and succeeding so successfully in that experience, that deserves a moment of absolute cor- courage you. and gratitude. Yeah. I know. I do struggle with that sometimes. You know, I feel like I do have imposter syndrome, but I think it's because I left school so young and I didn't get any higher education that I, I struggle putting myself in the same realms of other business mm. owners because I don't feel adequate I suppose yeah. so I kind of sit back a bit and I, I want to be able to humanize my brand more but I yeah. think I feel like I'm, I might al- almost get caught out <laughs> I absolutely understand that, this that's is becoming the... a counseling session <laughs> <laughs> I love it this is what we're here for um but that's the that's the absolute ex- explanation of imposter syndrome it's yeah. the feeling as though we're an imposter in a our life or a situation yeah. and and being caught out so yeah it's very very relevant as- yeah, and I think also uh, I see myself as a product developer, not mm. a business person. So I have all these ideas of products I want to do and the business around it just kind of gets in the way. Even, yeah. you know, like, yeah, everything, I, you know, like the the reels, the, the social content, everything. I just, that's what I struggle with. Yeah, no, I get that. And, and too, as you said, having ADHD, like my son has got ADHD. So mm. I understand as well that it can be hard to direct that, focus and attention where it needs to go yeah definitely absolutely but I feel like it's a beautiful thing too because you're in a you are like the puppeteer you are running your business and it's supporting your lifestyle the kids are involved it's a family activity your clients are also families who are going to the beach so there's so many similarities from a personality perspective yeah which is a beautiful thing because you just simply talk to your family and talk to yes. as if you were talking to your kids or or your mum or your sister or anything like that. So there's a real relatability point to it, which I absolutely love. Yeah. Um, and the biggest thing, business owners, and if this is for, for all of the listeners out there, as we know, we're really great at feeling as though we have to do everything all the time in business, mm-hmm. but it's going, okay, what am I not so great at? Or what takes me a million hours when it sh- would take a normal human one hour and yeah. really like defining what that is and then be okay with with bringing in support to do exactly just that yes yeah because that yeah, was I exactly agree. for me growing business I was the same I was like I've got to do everything I've got to be everywhere oh I can't do that my brain won't focus on that yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm totally undiagnosed something <laughs> yeah I think but, I think that's what it is it's like the yeah. delegating and it's difficult because I suppose when you're the business owner, you do so many jobs that it's difficult to get one person in to to, to do the all the little things. Job. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's also too, like when you're in it, you're so in it and you're like, yeah. oh, but I've got this big list of things that I've got to do. I couldn't possibly know what I need. I've yeah. just got to do the things so that it all gets done. So I guess that's where it's 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 beautiful having the opportunity to take a step back and, and have a look at the big picture because my my total understanding in life is that like we know we need to do stuff but it's always knowing where do we start it's like sometimes when I need to find something that's why I asked the question about finding the textile engineer because for me it's like you know make a beach towel like great I need material I'm going to go to spotlight yeah (laughs) and then if I jump on google and go hey google I want to make a towel company 
I'll get a million different results and I won't know where to start. So I'll go, all right, too hard, I'm giving up. Yeah, too hard. Yeah, I, I get that. I think it's baby steps, isn't it? It's just do one thing at a time um, and get your samples in and, and, and think, what would you like to feel and touch and mm. own? Yeah, so that's, I guess, for you. And, and is that how you, you did it? You made it, what would I like? Yeah, I think um, a friend told me that in marketing, you have to create a person who is your, you have to think about that person. What would that person like? And, you know, what pattern would she like? This is the mum is, for instance, a mum of two kids and they're aged this. And you have to think about that person. But I just made it myself because it was just too too much to think about someone else. (laughs) It's just what what I like, basically. Mm. Well, you are your ideal client. You've got well, children, basically, that's what family, it is. So I was thinking, why am I trying great. to overthink yeah, yeah. this? I, know. I don't care about what Jennifer wants. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> this is what I'm I want. I'm more important than Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that so much. I love that so much. And so with the business, obviously, okay, so just explain for everyone, it's it's a towel that we take to the beach that does not pick up excess sand and we yes. can roll it up really tiny and put it really in tiny it dries in half the time as a normal cotton towel um they don't smell they don't have that horrible moldy bacterial smell if you don't wash it and that's so that's a good thing you don't have to wash it every time you use it you can just wash it every now and again they're obviously lightweight so they're good for traveling great for camper mm-hmm. vans just recently i brought out um another 30 odd products so i've got i call them the anywhere bag because the anywhere bag is a beach bag but you can take it on holiday with you because it sits on top of a suitcase you know it has the suitcase trolley sleeve yeah and I've um, created makeup bags and toiletry bags that hold so much amazing products that fold in a different way so they you don't have that bulk but you can get all your products in there the, yeah so they were designed like with that in mind wet hair turbans so they're the same fabric yes as uh, the towels so they dry your hair in half the time and that means that's less frizz cooler yes. bags oh my goodness I'm so excited bags, for Christmas water bottles ponchos which obviously have the same fabric as the towels as well so they're yeah. lightweight and odor free and don't collect the awesome sand. for the kids for school that's yeah. incredible yeah because my kids I mean tropical Queensland we get sun one minute and then yeah, tropical storms the next exactly <laughs> you never know what you're gonna get yeah, that's amazing. And all these products are available online. Is it all online? Yes, they come in. All the new products come in six new patterns. We've got thirty design, thirty pattern towels, and got six new patterns of all of those products oh, I just mentioned. Yeah, this is amazing. My daughter is going to have an absolute field day on the oh. website. This is so exciting. And then, are you doing? Because I know you said you started at markets. Are you still doing markets? No, I don't do markets. Um, although my daughter is about to take her peas and I'll uh, take her let her test so I think she might start up doing some market so that's amazing (laughs) she might just start where I started and then see how we go but yeah um I do pop up stores so I do I've got seven this year all throughout Queensland in uh, mainly in Brisbane and I've got Pack Fair and Rabina the Sunshine Mm. Plaza and then five of them in Brisbane perfect Um, time before before Christmas too yeah so I go from literally having zero staff to having 50 two staff wow are they all casuals all casuals I started interviewing the first of the couple and then thought this is just ridiculous it's a six-week job how bad can they be so if they sent me an email they <laughs> sent me their resume I just said yeah you got the job oh that's <laughs> and then like 16 so you know how bad can it be for six weeks oh, yeah and what great experience for them that's incredible exactly yeah yeah, they, yeah. They and the all- fact that they're in they're in shopping centers right and is that where all the yes. pop-up stores are yeah yeah, you really like when you when you're in the middle of a shopping center there's eyes everywhere you, can, you yeah. can't do the wrong thing in the middle exactly. of a shopping center. yeah and, and there's loads of perks as well they get all product discounts and stuff so it'd be worth their while they will love it they will absolutely love it that's so incredible I'm going to um make sure I hit you up because uh my 14 year old is looking for a job Excellent. so next time you need staff I'm Excellent. volunteering Kobe oh we will do <laughs> Absolutely. Definitely. And Summer loves markets too. She'll probably do that for free. So <laughs> daughter needs help. Excellent. <laughs> like I'll let my 16-year-old know. <laughs> oh. oh, I love it so much. So you've got a 16-year-old daughter. How else? How old are the kids? Um, I've got a 15-year-old, a 16-year-old and a 13-year-old. Amazing. And all girls? All girls, yeah. Oh, beautiful. Um, and my 13-year-old does most of my social media. Oh, thank because... God. How good are that generation? 
Somebody. Yes, she's just so good. Uh, every time, apart from a few spelling mistakes and, you know, like, <laughs> I just think that I'd never be able to find someone as passionate as her to do it. So obviously oh, I try yeah. and supervise, but most of the time she's posted it before I could even, and then I'm like, can't you edit it? And she says, no, it's gone already. It's there. I'm like, oh. <laughs> no, I love it. I think it's beautiful. And and really, like in this day and age, and this is why you know, the podcast is humanizing business. There's humans behind the scenes yes. in the businesses. Yes. So these days that yes, I feel like it's since COVID when Zoom is now totally acceptable. We are both in our active wear. Yeah. Amazing. At you know, home. We're okay with spelling mistakes every now and again. We're okay yeah. with things not being perfect. I feel like people resonate with that more than the the prim perfect scripted yes. fantastic kind of stuff. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, that's so true. And I, I hope that's true as well because well, it I is now. Really struggle otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've made it a thing, which is great. And how empowering for your daughters. That's yeah, amazing. it's great because I hope they don't think that building a business is easy because when I'm sitting on the sofa with my laptop, they probably think it is. I, I want them to to learn and they're very much into product development as well they come up with loads of ideas so it is it is good to be able to sort of pass on some you know (sighs) thoughts and the process as well oh absolutely I had dreams when I started my first conveyancing company that it was going to be a legacy company and my kids would want to be involved and then they kind of got older to understand what business was and I was like so you're going to work with me one day they're like no. no what you do is no. so boring mum I am yeah. never doing that I, I like, know oh okay I know uh, especially when I create patterns and then I say what do you think and they go hmm, it's a bit old lady and I'm like well how, how old's old lady and they say mm, 40 yeah I'm like okay so Thanks, I think girls. my next thing is I'm going to do a range of um sort of teen early 20s really focus on that on that oh, age yeah. bracket the girls do like a full takeover yeah yeah, That'd let's see what they come up with. That would be they wanna, so They want to cool. change the logo, you know, make something a bit different. And I was like, okay, let's do a whole different collection for you. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I love that so much because there are brands out there at the moment that are just doing things differently that are getting so much coverage. And the like, the kids our, our kids' ages, they just love it. They absolutely love yeah. it. Um, but they don't want to be on the screen. So if I say to them, can I film you? us brainstorming together they're like no yeah so then I get then I'm like I don't know where to go from here because if I wanted to make it a big thing I couldn't because they don't want to be yeah just just get Maritza's kids over and and get them to pose and (laughs) exactly interesting though my kids they have their phones in their hands 24 7 and are on snapchat and tiktok and whatever they're on I'm like take a photo with me they're like yeah they won't yeah they won't I know I think it's gone the whole way around you know like how there was a lot of um, almost like narcissistic kind of influences of always look at me look at me and now I think it's gone the whole way where Mm -hmm. kids are more like no um it's going to be on the web forever I'm I don't want a photo yeah Yeah. which is not a bad thing at least they realize that it's not going anywhere and you can't delete that stuff and I feel like I know my generation was kind of when the phones and cameras came out and we all went the hard way (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. We didn't yeah. realize that it wasn't. I'm just glad there wasn't any phones back in the 90s and early 2000s. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if only the walls could talk. Hey? Yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, I love it so much. So much. So, where can the listeners find these amazing products? And I'm so excited to jump on. So, website oh. and social media handles. Go yeah, so I've got um, my website, skygazerculture.com. And I also have, um, we've launched in America as well. So we're skygazerusa.com. Mm-hmm. So if you've got any f- um, friends that live in the States or family, it's a good place to get a present over during the Christmas. And my social media media is skygazerculture as well, at skygazerculture oh. on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Oh, I love it that the girls are doing TikTok for you as well. Yeah, I know. I, I ask my kids no all idea. the time. Oh, I, I know. I'm the same. absolutely no idea. <laughs> I'm the same and I almost, I, I don't have any intention on learning either. <laughs> no, that, that's true. <laughs> no, thank you. No, thank you. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for coming on and chatting today. Was there anything that you would like to leave the listeners with knowing that we're talking about humanizing business? Is this something that you would like to just share with them? Just be yourself and just, oh no, that doesn't sound great, does it? No, that's a really hard question, isn't it? <laughs> no, but I feel like that's the perfect question. And and there's an element of, if, if you even acknowledging like the ADHD side, it's like, 
be authentically you. You can yeah, still be, yeah. do incredible things. Be, be authentically things. you. Don't sweat the small stuff and just just enjoy business as well. I think, you know, you've got one life and don't, you know, don't stress about it. I do often find like, am I doing enough? Am I, I could be killing it now. There's a, there's another business that's only been open for two years and, you know, I should be doing better than they are because I've been going five years. And then I think, oh, just slow down and just be enough. Mm -hmm. Just be happy with what you have. Stop stressing. I'm doing really well. And I hope I'm an inspiration to the kids and other people that, Mm. you know, like want to have their own business. That's enough. Absolutely. I love that point that you said too. We only have one life. Yeah. Mm. I know. Shame. (laughs) Well, there might be many more. Don't worry. (laughs) Don't get too upset about them. Don't sweat the small stuff. (laughs) We'll worry about that next life. (laughs) Uh, Oh, amazing. Well, thank you so much for coming and chatting with us. Thank you for having me. Sharing your journey. It's such an incredible one and thank yeah, you said, thank you so much quite unique I suppose yeah please take <laughs> a moment to way. really celebrate that it's incredible it really is well done oh, thank you so much mm, my pleasure and thank you all for tuning in again um, as you know you can find us on the she can humanize business website we've got the social handles and we've got all the platforms on the podcast Also, too, if you want to check out or even consider running your own podcast, Guide Your Light Network is the network that we choose and use to host our platform every week. So thank you again. Thank you, Georgette. Thank you all for tuning in. Stay happy, healthy, and I will speak to you next week. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. I would love to hear your feedback around what resonated and what key lessons and learnings that you took out of today's episode. You can find me on Instagram and on LinkedIn under the She Can Humanize Business podcast or Kiani Mills. I really hope that you were able to see, feel and experience a new way of humanizing business. 